Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Uh, Droid Life Show, special, special Droid Life Show. Tim and I together today talking Nexus lineup and Droid Turbo. So it's kind of been a pretty big week for us. We had Droid Turbo early on. Now we've got the whole brand new Nexus lineup in-house, unboxed things. We're just kind of things flying around the office right now. So Tim and I wanted to get together and chat about it. So I'm Kellen with Tim. Tim, say hi real quick. Hey, guys. How's it going? So thank you for joining us on uh, yeah this Halloween afternoon. It's Halloween on a Friday, which is like the perfect day for Halloween. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we we really just wanted to get together and talk to you guys about the stuff. The Nexus devices have been in house for all of four hours, maybe something like that. So we've unboxed them, or I've unboxed them and played with a couple of them. Droid Turbo, on the other hand, has been in my hands pocket since uh, Tuesday when Motorola and Verizon took the wraps off that. Uh, yeah. So, what do you want to talk about first? The whale, Shamu? Uh, no, let's save the best for last. Let's talk turbo real quick. <laughs> maybe the turbo is the best. Well, maybe, but I don't think that's, like, the phone everyone's more excited about. I feel like we should make people wait to hear Nexus 6 talk. To hear Nexus 6 talk. Okay, well, we can, we can do that. All right, so here is Droid Turbo. So, I have the ballistic nylon black version, and... The little red line down here means it's like the special 64 gig version, and uh, it's actually not bad. Um, the device is slightly large, I will say, um, but uh, you know it's got like we expected. It's got the uh, quad HD. It's got the Snapdragon 805, three gig of RAM, uh, 21 megapixel shooter on the back, uh, massive 3900 milliamp hour battery. And then it comes in 32 gig or 64 gig. And there's also a metallic red version and a metallic black. And then this is the new sort of, uh, yeah, the ballistic nylon is what it is. Uh, you'll notice that they kind of ditched the Kevlar. So I don't think Kevlar is even a part of the thing anymore. It's just these new metalized backs and then the ballistic nylon. So we've gone away from Kevlar. Yay! Um, I would say I kind of prefer this ballistic nylon version to the metalized red or black. Those ones kind of have a little shine to them. And while the red one looks kind of cool because it's red, this one's a lot nicer, I think. Um, let's see. So $199 on a contract, $599 off for the 32 gig, $249 on contract for the 64 gig. Uh, so not a bad price for a device this, uh, this high end. Um, in my testing, battery life... That's obviously the big deal, right? 3,900 milliamp hour battery. I haven't seen amazing battery life. Uh, I'm not having to, like, charge it every night. I mean, like, it's, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. I've still got 30% or something like that. I guess I just kind of was hoping for a little bit more. Uh, I was telling Tim this morning, I woke I didn't. I didn't even plug the thing in at night. Woke up, had 20-some percent, and... It's now showing red, and I haven't really been using it all that much. A couple hours of screen on time. We're not talking like four or five or six hours of screen on time. So decent battery life, not necessarily amazing. I mean, this is not even close to like one plus one or even the Xperia Z3 Compact. Those things had far better battery life, I thought. Um, I'll do some more testing over Wi-Fi, mix of Wi-Fi. I've just been doing LTE testing for now. But uh, yeah, what do you think about the uh, Droid Turbo? Well, uh, from what you've said about the battery, I think it's really lame. You know, considering they, they push battery life so much, and then it's not even you. You're not the only person that's saying the battery life sucks. No, nope, I'm not. So, you know, not that it sucks. It's just that it's average. And yeah. being the Droid Turbo, it's supposed to be way beyond average. It's supposed to be good. So, you know, the fact that maybe it needs an update or something, that's something they could fix, kind of like what we saw with the 360 or the Nexus 5. You know, it's not like an update that could help the battery, but... Yeah. I just you expect awesome battery right out of the right out of the gate. So uh, other than that, you know, I played with it for a little bit. QHD display looks pretty nice. The performance seems pretty great. Capacitive buttons aren't as bad as I thought they would be, but they're still capacitive. So say when Lollipop comes out, you're not going to get that true Lollipop experience with the little triangle square circle setup. Nope. Mm -hmm. And that those are one of the things I like about Lollipop. I like the new look. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that uh, you have to deal with capacitive. Other than that, uh, it's kind of thick, but if you're coming from, say, like a Moto X or kind of a thicker phone, kind of, you know, it's not too bad. It feels pretty good in hand. So 
it seems like it's a good droid. How about that? It's a very good droid. Yeah, I feel like this is the first droid we've had in a while that's like really wor- worthy of the name. I mean, they threw everything into this phone. There's like there's nothing it, it lacks really. I mean, it's got top of the line absolute everything. Now, you know, like the design of the phone, look, I'm not going to lie. It's not my favorite design ever. It's kind of squared off at the top, but it's probably the best looking droid I think we've seen in a while. Like this is better looking than the Max and Ultra from last year probably even the HD from the year before. I mean, this Ballistic Nylon one I think is the best looking one we've had in a while. Uh, Like you said, though, the capacitive touch buttons are a little weird, although you can swipe up into Google Now pretty quickly. It actually does that pretty easily. Um, Like you said, it is a little thick. I mean, you know, if if you got a basically a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in a phone, it's not going to be thin. So you you kind of know that going in. It's not necessarily a deal breaker. Um, and I'm kind of with you. I feel like a software update will fix some of the battery issue, maybe. And it's not like the battery's dying in a day. I'm not saying that. It's just Motorola and Verizon are saying it's 48-hour battery life. And I believe the Max was probably pretty close to that last year. Uh, this phone so far, is just it's just not really close. Um, my first charge, I was in New York uh, for the event, and uh, I took the charger off. It was, it was like 2 p.m. or something in the afternoon. And then I went around NYC for the night, uh, didn't charge the phone at all, um, tried to use it as much as I could. I uh, woke up the next morning, and it was like, I want to say it was like 20%. So I was like, oh, I better plug this in. I don't know if that's going to last. So I gave it some juice, jumped on a plane to fly back to Portland. It was in wife, or it was in airplane mode. When I got back, it was like somehow the battery had drained like 20%, even though it was in airplane mode, which is, that's just weird. That shouldn't happen. Um, and then I sat down in a restaurant in a SeaTac airport, and the, I had like 20%. I was talking to you, and the battery just kept going down and down and down. And uh, so I was standing in the airport then with it hooked up to a turbocharger, which is kind of like the point of the phone. You're not supposed to ever be standing in an airport, right, looking for juice like all those commercials. So I, I don't know. I, I would hope that a software update could help to get that closer to I mean, look, if it could last you a day and then into the next day till like 2 p.m. or something, that'd be fine. But I'm seeing more like till the next day and like 10 a.m. I need a charger. So, look, it's better than other phones, but it also has a giant battery. So, Do you think the QHD display was really necessary to put into the Droid Turbo? I, I mean, I don't, I'm not a huge Quad HD fan. It just seems like such overkill. And if you go 1080p, which is fine, it probably really, blah, blah, it probably would have really helped battery life. I mean, like the Droid Max, it has a 720p display, so it's even you know less power hungry, and that thing lasted a really really long time. This phone, so far, not so much, but that can yeah hopefully be optimized. So overall, though, I like the phone. I mean, it's not personally a phone I think I would choose because I like the the sort of simplistic look of the regular Moto X better. But I mean, if you want well, what should maybe turn into like two-day battery life and a 21-megapixel camera that seems to take pretty good photos for the most part. Um, I have been satisfied, I would say, with the camera. It's a little slow, but otherwise, pretty nice phone, Turbo. I mean, people are seeming pretty excited about it. And they do. They should be. It's, it's actually a really nice phone. I don't have a lot of complaints about it. It's just I was hoping for 48-hour battery life, and I'm getting more like, I don't know, 30. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and it's available yesterday, so you can go buy this thing right now if you want. If you want a Droid Turbo, you can go into a Verizon store and buy it today, which is kind of cool. That is no, nice. No waiting around. So, uh, anything else, Droid Turbo? I think that's it. Yeah, I think so too. Um, it does come with a turbo charger, by the way, so you don't have to spend the thirty-five bucks on one, and it will charge pretty fast. Um, when I was standing in the airport. I was charging with a turbocharger, and it, it, I mean, it gave me. I was there for maybe 25 minutes, and uh, with it plugged in, and I got plenty of battery to get me through the rest of the day. So that is kind of nice. Uh, yeah, we'll have a review up shortly, uh, probably early next week, I would guess. So if you're holding out for that, waiting to hear our word, apologies, but we do try to actually review these things, not just whip them out in two days. So, all right, cool. Um, so that's Stray Turbo. Is there a, which one do you want to go next? So you want to go Nexus 9 now, then go Nexus 6? Sure. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, well, before we get there, um, we also have a Nexus player in house, which I haven't even opened yet. And the Nexus player's gamepad. Nice. So we have those as well. Um, Nexus 9 and these are shipping by like November 3rd, I think, right? So we will uh, take a look at those as much as we can over the uh, next couple of days. Uh, so yeah, Nexus 9. All right. Here's the box. Mm. Ooh. And if you flip it over, it does say six. So. <laughs> uh, this is the 32 gig Wi-Fi version in black. There we go. Nexus 6, or Nexus 9, I mean. And uh, it just looks to me like a square version of the Nexus 7. It's got like that soft touch finish. Nexus logo, same style and everything. Obviously, HTC made this bad boy this year. Uh, it feels really nice, but it feels, you know, like a Nexus 7. And the Nexus 7 felt fine, so I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, front, front-facing front boom sound speakers, which I haven't tested because I haven't even put an account on this thing yet. Uh, Lollipop in square 4x3 format. That's hot. It is pretty hot. Uh, it's really thin. I mean, you can see that. Really thin. It's like 7.95 millimeters or something, I think. Hmm. Uh, Tegra K1, 64-bit dual-core processor in there, 2 gig of RAM, 16 or 32 gig of storage, Wi-Fi or LTE models, black, white, and tan colors, though the tan's not available yet. I don't even think the LTE version is. You can just pre-order the Wi-Fi versions, which is what it is. Buttons over here on the side. Uh, Headphone jack up top. Upside-down USB port on the bottom. So yes, if you were wondering, micro USB port, Google keeps putting them upside down. At least in our opinion, they're upside down. And it's the same way in the Nexus 6. They flipped it, even from the Moto X and the Droid Turbo. So, uh, overall, though, you know, I haven't, I haven't played with it a bunch, but it just feels like a bigger 8.9-inch Nexus 9. It's got matte finish. It's not you know like the metal we saw from the HTC One M8 or anything like that. And uh, yeah, we're interested to give this thing a real spin. So Tim will be taking this bad boy on, and, uh, you know, the thing launches November 3rd, which is Monday, so we are going to do our best to have a review ready as close to that date as possible so you guys can know if this is the uh, next tablet for you or not. That's all I'll be doing this weekend is playing with the Nexus now. <laughs> yeah, Tim is going to be all over this thing. I'm uh, interested to hear what you think about Lollipop on a tablet because I've been using Lollipop on a phone for a while in the Nexus 5. Right. Uh, but I haven't, you know, even really seen it or used it at all on a tablet, and I just want to know, like, you know, see what the apps look like and things like that to see if they're different. And, uh, you know, it looks like you're going to get to play with, like, new Gmail and stuff like that, so that should be fun. Here is, I don't know if you've seen this, like, the settings layout, totally different on a tablet now than it is a phone. It's all sectioned off in boxes, kind of like Google Now cards. Yep. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks kind of nice, i got to say. Um... I mean, just seeing some of the hands-on videos with the Nexus 9, mm-hmm. it looks buttery smooth, and it I'm is, all uh, about that butter. Yeah, I mean, like, look at the... Uh, let's see if I can do this. Like, that, that animation yeah, that is looks, so... All the animations are sick. Yeah, all those Lollipop animations are so good. So, yeah, Tim will have this and be uh, all over the Nexus 9. Thirty. Oh. This is a 32-gig version. I know you wanted the white, but this is what Google sent us, so this is what you get. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's black. Yeah, never mind. No review incoming anymore. <laughs> I'm over it. Can't review it unless it's white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and we'll see how, like, the boom sound speakers are. Obviously, they're not as pronounced as they are on the, uh, like, M8. You know how they were machined holes, basically. You have a speaker down here. It's kind of hidden, and then you have one up here. And the Nexus 10 had dual front-facing speakers, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not necessarily new to the Nexus line, but this is boom sound. So kind of cool. God, Lollipop is so hot. <laughs> it really is awesome. I'm just going to look in sound real quick while I have it here. To see if I it, it mentions boom sound. No, it it's doesn't. way more exciting than the update the, to KitKat. I mean, KitKat yeah. was definitely cool with the white icons and all that, but Lollipop just takes it a step further with the you know, the new layer mm-hmm. in applications and all that and the, the effects. and I love it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, but for those wondering, it's still that kind of like phone portrait layout, just like the Nexus 7. So this is the tablet layout. You're not getting like a totally different tablet. And it does auto-rotate on the home screen. 
which is nice. So you can go landscape if you want. Uh, yeah, so 8 megapixel shooter on the back while we're not tablet photographers. I'd imagine it'd probably be a decent shooter back there. It doesn't have OIS, though, like the Nexus 6, so I don't think. So, yeah. Anything you want to know about the Nexus 9? Uh, no, I'm, I'm ready to dive into it on my, myself and just kind of yeah. figure it out as I go along. Yeah, and like I like I said, I haven't even really played with it. <laughs> I mean, I like un- unboxed, you can't answer my like questions. unboxed it, and then was like, okay, let's do a show. Uh, all right, so we should talk talk whale. Let's speak, do it. It's time. Whale. Yeah, it is time. Okay, so let me clean it up a little bit. All right, here it is. Nexus Six, Shamu, the whale. Google's whale, the massive six-inch device. That's bigger than your face. It's our, it's the Motorola Nexus you've all been waiting for. Well, I should say, for those of you waiting for a Motorola Nexus, you finally got one. I don't know if this is the one you've been waiting for. We'll find out, though. Uh, obviously, this is the midnight blue version. Also comes in white. And uh, the blue's subtle. It's not, like, crazy bright blue. I know Tim wanted, like, sky blue. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, isn't it kind of boring? I mean, no offense to Google or design. I'm just like the darker colors are just yeah. kind of boring to me lately. Up close, it's kind of interesting because you have the the sort of navy blue back, but then the metal is blue, and yeah. so it gives off this kind of blue shine depending on the light you get it in, and it's kind of hard to see on camera. But the metal, the blue metal trim is actually kind of cool, and it looks a lot better in person, I think, than on camera. Hmm. Uh, they also went with the dimple from last year's Moto X rather than the uh, the big disc thing. So here is here's this year's. So it's got that like big disc logo, and then the uh, frisbee. Yeah, and then the next six is back to that sort of really nice dimple that your finger just sets in ever so perfectly. Nexus logo, 13 megapixel camera with OIS, little camera flash ring there. The camera just looks tiny. On that body, and it's not even proportionate. It's kind of ridiculous. This is what it looks like on the on the Moto X. Yeah, it looks proportionate here. You know, the same <laughs> size as kind of the frisbee yeah. on the back, and yeah. on that it just looks tiny. Yeah, everything looks kind of tiny on it. Uh, so six inch quad HD display, and and you know, like you you asked me if the Droid Turbo was kind of overkill with quad HD. It's only 5.2 inches, so maybe. Like, this one's 6 inches. Like, you could maybe get away with having quad HD. Oh, I'm still not sure we need it, but look at that thing. Pretty minimal bezel. There's, like, no chin at all down here. You see that it's, like, right up to the bottom speaker there. Yeah, and as we guessed, I mean, there's no real Android usage or need right. for such a large display. Right. I mean, This is true. It's yeah. just, like, we made a big phone because people like big phones kind of thing. Yeah. Um, dual uh, stereo speakers on the front. So the, the new Moto X has what look like two speakers, but they're not. Um, one's only for phone and one's only for external audio, basically. This actually has dual stereo speakers like the uh, Nexus 9, which is kind of cool. Uh, two megapixel front camera. And uh, yeah, 805, 3 gig of RAM, six, or 32 gig or 64 gig storage. So, I mean, like I'm holding it in hand. Here, I'll put it next to my head. Here it is next to my head. It's pretty it's large. It's pretty big. I guess we should do the hold it up to the ear test. <laughs> you know, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, you know. Yeah. I mean, we've all used notes and stuff, right? So Right. Well, it is slightly bigger, and we do have a note here, so here's note you four. Have, I mean, you have sort of large hands, so like you can palm a basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it seems it doesn't seem too big for your hands. Like take um, right. Marquez MKBHD for example, that phone would fit his hand just fine because he has Probably the biggest would. hands of all humans. I could see him like loving it. Yeah. He yeah, absolutely. Decides. But so for me, it. with just tiny smaller hands, it might be a little hard. Yeah, I mean, holding it, you know, like it's Motorola's done that good job with the sort of curve to the back. And I mentioned this in my unboxing, like it, the weight distribution feels really good when you're holding it because the, the phone's not light. I think it's like 184 grams or something like that, which is on the heavier side. But when you hold it in hand, it feels like there's some good balance to it. Like it's not too bottom heavy or top heavy. It feels like everything's sort of uh, laid out nicely. 
Um, yeah, I'm excited to start playing with. It. I haven't even like taken a picture yet. I haven't even you know jumped into Lollipop on this thing yet. I've sort of uh, just been like running around with all these devices trying to get ready for the show. So, uh, but like like you mentioned, the performance of Lollipop on the Nexus Nine, it's got to be equally as good, I would hope, on this phone. I mean, you know, Nexus phones always run better than than the rest because it's like they created basically Lollipop at the same time they were doing, you know, it's optimized. The like yeah, they made it almost for this hardware. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to decide. Like, I'm holding it going, this thing's really big. Uh, and, like, they did a good job designing it where there's minimal bezel. It's going to be tough to, like, get used to a big old phone like this. But Well, you're gonna, you don't really have a choice, I don't think. It's, yeah. a, it's a Nexus phone. It's a Motorola so. Nexus, not even just a Nexus. You know what I mean? Like, no. Like, if, since day one, we were going, we want a Motorola Nexus, and we finally got one. I almost feel like we all have to buy it. Yeah, except for me, I feel like the Moto X is such a, a good device, and with its, it you know, very minimal tweaks to the skin and all that, that's going to be my Nexus. I'm going to get the Moto X, it's going to have Lollipop, and it's going to be the next best thing. It's going to be the bee's knees. So, that thing running Lollipop is going to be legit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Moto X, and the, we were talking, I think, the other day that I wouldn't be surprised if the new Moto X gets... Lollipop, like, in a week after it's made available. Because mm. Motorola is just, they're probably just waiting. I mean, they they have stock Android, basically, on their phones. Yeah, well, a lot of those carriers, I mean, from the rumblings we've heard and the rumor mill, you know, I mean, thanks to the developer preview, I mean, OEMs have had the code, you know, on, you know, in their files for quite some time, so they've been able to tweak it and all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and that doesn't really speak for HTC or Samsung or LG, you know, car uh, OEMs that throw on custom skins, but anyone who uses stock Android like Motorola or NVIDIA uh, with their uh, devices, then we could probably expect Lollipop updates pretty quickly. Yeah, I would hope so. Like, you know, we've seen Samsung's got a testing. HTC, yeah, gave, said within 90 days. And then Motorola, I mean, Motorola last year with KitKat, they pushed that thing to the unlocked Moto X, I think in like, what was it like four, 12 days, 14 days? Was Verizon like, had it like in no time at all, which that's is right. Maybe that's what it remarkable. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was crazy. It was almost like they made a special deal to get theirs out. But yeah, that came out like it was within an under t like two weeks, I think. So pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, here it is though, against the size wise, against the new Moto X, you can just see how much bigger this thing is. It's crazy big. I mean, there's no getting around that. It's a big phone. Yeah. No one, no one would ever call it a small phone. No. So. Yeah. Here it is next to. Nexus 9, just so you can see. <laughs> it really is like a small package. <laughs> okay. I wish I had the Nexus 7 sitting here. That's pretty funny. Because it's probably pushing Nexus 7 size. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it. we have one now. We'll start testing it and getting it ready for review. T-Mobile is the only one that's given us a launch date. They, they're they saying November 12th. So, uh, you know, expect more around that time as far as Nexus 6 goes. Oh, and we tested it. It works on Verizon. So we should talk a little bit about this because we had some people go... Yeah, we know it works on... Cause, so we tested earlier to show you that it works on Verizon. And we had some people go, why are you showing that? We, we knew it was going to work on Verizon. Well, it's kind of been weird, right? Like, Google announced the phone. They said it's coming to all five major carriers, including Verizon. And then Verizon didn't say anything. And so we asked Verizon, are you carrying it? And they said, yep, we're carrying it, but we can't tell you anything else right now. So we're, we just assumed it's maybe going through testing on their network or something. And uh, so... As we've gotten closer and the pre-order came, uh, opened up on Wednesday, this like official Nexus 6 support page went up in Google support area and Verizon was like the only carrier that was no longer mentioned. And so everyone went, oh my God, There's all, everyone freaked out, right? It was, and they just assumed Verizon was like backing out of it and all this stuff. And so we got it and slapped our Verizon SIM in, booted it up and it works. Placed calls, so 3G must be working. LTE lit up immediately, so data working. Uh, it seems to work out of the box. So if you pre-ordered one and it shows up in a few weeks, seems like it's going to work for Verizon out of the box. Now, if you bought one and you are going to like start up Verizon service, that might be different because last year with the Nexus 7 LTE, there was an issue where basically it hadn't passed Verizon testing and so none of the IMEIs were in their systems and if you tried to activate one, it basically just wouldn't work. 
Um, and so that could happen again. We don't really know. Uh, but if you have a SIM and you're a Verizon customer already and you ordered this phone, when you get it, just put your SIM in. It should work. At least that's what we just did, and it seems to work fine. So That's going to be a huge relief to a lot of the people you know, who are worried about it. Yeah, a lot of people were pretty worried. Don't worry, guys. Droid Life has your back. <laughs> well, I mean, can you imagine if... Uh, it show like you pre-order one. It shows up in a couple of weeks, and you put your SIM in there, and no, and you're a Verizon. Right. You just spent six hundred fifty, seven hundred dollars on a phone. Doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And then if if that were to happen, we we it would probably be like, we don't know when this is happening. It could be a few weeks while we're testing or whatever was going on, and people would have been mad. So at least at this time, it works. Unless something weird can change, and Verizon can somehow shut it down without allowing it, which I can't imagine that's possible. Should work just fine. Yeah. Which is awesome. So, yeah. So much going on right now. Oh, a whole bunch. I feel like we just reviewed a bunch of devices, and now we have, like, six more that we need to go through. And you're still finishing up Note 4. Yeah, Note 4. I'm, I mean, in my mind, it's done. It's just about taking all of those words and putting them on fake paper online. Mm-hmm. And that's the hard part. You have to... You have to process everything, your entire experience, and then you know put it into sections, you know, and categorize everything in good, not so good, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, for a phone, especially as important as the Note 4, there's a lot to take in, a whole bunch of software stuff you have to talk about. So, you know, those things take time, unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, it'll be worth the wait, hopefully. I think you know it's a great phone. If you were ever like, if you were hesitating, if the Note 4 was a phone you wanted. I can like say real quick, it it's a it's a good phone. It has a super super awesome display. It has a legit camera. The battery life is phenomenal. The, the only downside is TouchWiz. So right. I mean, but you all knew I was going to say that. Yep. So yeah, other than that, it's a great phone. If you can't wait any longer, feel free to pick it up. It's fine. Yeah, like I haven't played with the Note 4 much. Like you went to the the press event for it, and you've got our review unit. I mean, I have one now. I just got one today, but uh, we met up the other day and. You turned it on, and like instantly, I went, "Oh my god, that that display is amazing!" Like Samsung, just they do the best. Their Super AMOLED displays are the best, and that thing, it just looks like it floats kind of at the top, and the colors are crazy. So we we were doing some display comparisons yesterday with a bunch of other phones, and it's just it's just better than everybody else's display. Like yeah, compared absolutely. To the three compared to the new Moto X, compared to I can't remember what else we compared it to. The Droid Turbo, although the Droid Turbo's panel is pretty nice too, but it was just I, better. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the only issue with the display, and I really wouldn't even call it an issue because Samsung, you know, claim it, you know, says it's supposed to be there, but it's kind of it's the the minuscule screen uh, screen gap on each side on the top, bottom, and all the sides. I mean, there's definitely a black line. You can see it just go all the way around the display. But And that's really if you kind of pay attention to it. Uh, other than that, it's pretty sweet. I'm, are, you, you, are you turning yours on now to see the screen? I'm looking for this black thing. You mean like where the frame hits the panel? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean it's not bugging me right now. Well, no, it's not. I don't think it's supposed to bug you. I'm just saying there is a screen gap. Like it's noticeable if you look at it. Like right? I remember the like screen gap gate, and people were putting <laughs> screen credit gap cards gate. in there and all that crap. I, I I don't know. I just it's not it's not bugging me. I don't know. I don't know how you would put a credit card in there. I'm talking about um, <laughs> the actual display itself and the black kind of you know in oh, between. See that huge black line yeah. right there? That's what yeah, I'm talking about. I know what you mean. Yeah, Samsung's kind of always done that. That does bug me a little bit. I know a little bit. Mean. And it's it's yeah. probably the most noticeable on this phone than any device I've ever played with. But but it's gorgeous. So and the build feels really nice, that metal frame around there. Good job. Absolutely. Samsung. Yeah. Great job, Samsung. I'm no hater. Somebody in the chat wants me to hold the Nexus 6 to my face again. <laughs> and lock your screen. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, so click on your screen. That way they can see it real good. Does that make sense? Like this? You want me to do this again? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Am I going to turn into a meme? <laughs> <laughs> you do make the best memes. <laughs> it's pretty big. Pretty big phone. So, uh, 
one of the cool things I can't wait to to use is like the or Google's version of Moto Display or Active Display, because that's like when you get a notification and you just pick the phone up, it recognizes you're picking it up and it lights the screen up, since it's an AMOLED panel. So that's awesome. I mean, like those are the things about the Moto X that we love so much is the active display, moto display thing. And so with uh, Google basically doing that on this phone, although I don't know how much interaction there is with it because I haven't, again, really played with it, but those are the little things that matter. Obviously, you can say, okay, Google, and it will it will do its thing. Yeah, a lot of stuff to talk about. Next few weeks are going to be fun. We've got, yeah, Tim's Note 4 review, uh, Droid Turbo review in the next few days as well. Uh, then Nexus 9 review, then Nexus 4 review, Nexus player in there somewhere. Just never stops. It's a good time to be an Android fan. And then Lollipop's going to start coming out to everyone's phone. Well, at least all the Nexus phones, then probably the Moto phones, then probably the HTC phones. So much fun going on. It's going to be a blast. Stay yeah. tuned. Stay tuned. Um, so, yeah, what else do you want to talk about? <laughs> Um, I was going to mention something about the Turbo, actually. Oh, I almost made a post about this. Do you notice anything missing from this thing? Anything missing? Um, I feel like this should be obvious. Um, wait. Once I, once I tell you, it will be really obvious. Is there a headphone jack? Yeah, it's up top. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Oh, um, SIM. SIM slot. Well, this is okay. So the SIM slot is under the volume. Yeah, you just right. pop the volume rocker out. That was like on the max. Right, no, there's, no, there's there's something else missing. Well, are you hiding it with your fingers? It's no, I'm not. Uh, speaker. There's no Verizon logo anywhere. Oh else. god, well come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I know that's been like a huge deal, but it's it's. <laughs> like there's there's not I almost like posted it up though that's like a big deal like the note probably has that's a huge deal I have the note 4 the note 4 says Verizon 4 GLT at least it doesn't say it on the front the, the G3 says it on the front and back right like three times so yeah it's like their flagship phone and it doesn't even say Verizon on it I think they <laughs> listen Droid Life has a lot of pull from what I've learned and yeah. carriers especially Verizon listen. And so we always make fun of them for always throwing on so many Verizon logos. Maybe they finally said, you know what? Screw them. We have been known to have some pull. That is true. No. I don't think I held these up together. Here's the uh, 6 versus the Turbo. Oh, that's ridiculously big. I thought the Turbo was kind of big, but yeah. look Turbo's at that thing. Big. Yeah, look mm. at it. It's just huge. Can you hold up the Nexus 9, Nexus 6, Turbo, and... Old Moto X at the same time? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Something might drop. Something might break. And none of these are mine, so I don't really want to break them. <laughs> They're all review units. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what else to say. Oh, we could open up. I think I opened up a Q&A. We can see if anybody's got questions for us. We love questions. Oh, is there a notification LED on the Nexus 6? I do not believe so. Oh, here, let me let me select that from Ahmed says, is there, an X, is there an LED? And I don't believe so. It is this. So you get the like glowing, strobing. The only thing I will say is I wish it had the like sensors where you could just like wave your hand over it like the Moto X. Let me see if I can even get it to happen again. Picking up. There we go. So yeah, you get that sort of dis Moto display like thing. But yeah, no, no LED. So no notification light. So you basically have to go Moto display style. Which is better than an LED, I think, anyway. So, uh, nope. What else do we got? Oh, the uh, Nexus 9, by the way, has tap to wake, which is kind of cool. So the Nexus 6 does not, but this does. So you can double tap, I think. Yeah, there you go. So that's nice. I don't know why, like, this has it and the Nexus 6 doesn't. You know, like, the Nexus 6 has, because it has an AMOLED panel, it can do the Moto display thing. And this one doesn't have that, but because it's an LCD, but it has tap to wake. Like I, th I feel like tap to wake should be on both of them. Well, Lollipop, you know, added that kind of ability for all Android yeah. devices. So yeah, maybe it's just something they got to turn on, or maybe there's a hidden set setting in the developer options. Who knows? Have you taken a peek in there, like the developer options or any of that? I haven't yet. No. Do it. <laughs> Somebody wants to know. <laughs> I can reach the notification shade with one hand holding the phone at rest position. 
Let's see. I'll try to do it left-handed. There's going to be no way. <laughs> so this is kind of, I think, what you mean. I mean, like, <laughs> it's not even close. No. <laughs> I'm like stretching. I can't. I can't do it. That's bad. Like you definitely have to do a little. Definitely have to do like, like so. This is how I would hold my phone, like this. You can see I can't even come close. I would have to do a shimmy and then get up there to that corner. Uh, Steve Jobs would not approve. Nope. Although he, again, he wouldn't approve of anything that's been coming out lately. Probably not. Not even his <laughs> own products. No. Nope. Oh, somebody wanted. Did I hold the Nexus Nine up to the six? I did, right? Yeah, you do. You wanted to see how blue it was. I'll do that one more time. It's tough to tell in this light. It looks black on this video feed, at least for me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking yeah. at it now, and it looks kind of black there. It really is blue. Trust me. I mean, it's it's tough to tell because the matte finish on the next time, and it it's almost like a soft touch matte finish kind of on the six. It's it's the frame is where you can see, and I know that's not translating as well either. But the frame's definitely blue. That's where you kind of get that blue look. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify for the person asking, I, I don't really care for the Nexus 6 size. I, I'm going to wait for the Moto X to get Lollipop, and then I'll, then I'll be happy. So, oh, yeah. This clarification. Vincent said, does Tim like the size? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not very clear. <laughs> um, this guy didn't even ask a question. He just said straight up, oh, it's Vincent again. I love the blue color. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see oh, here's one about the turbo have you guys noticed the Wi-Fi dropping issue with the turbo I haven't necessarily noticed I mean I haven't actually I shouldn't say because I haven't necessarily used Wi-Fi on it much I've just been testing it over LTE what I will say is the hotspot has an issue and I know some of, we've had some people write in and tell us that there's like an ongoing thread at Motorola's forums, and they've contacted customer service and stuff like that about Hotspot not working on the Turbo. Uh, and I will say that while I was in NYC, I was using it for Hotspotting, and it was definitely, like, I could get it to connect, but it was intermittent. So it would come and go and just shut off, and I'd have to reboot it. So I think there's definitely um, some Hotspot issues. Um, as far as the Wi-Fi, I'm going to start testing the Wi-Fi probably starting tonight and tomorrow. So um, I'll have to let you guys know about that. Uh, let's see what else. How are the speakers? You know, I haven't listened to any sound yet whatsoever. Someone's and, asking, oh, sorry, if the uh, Nexus 9 is going to be a worthy upgrade from the Nexus 10, which just sounds weird considering the number goes down. But what is do you it going to be a worthy upgrade over what? Over the Nexus 10. Oh. A device that's like two years old now? Yeah, it's fairly old. I would say probably, just because... Like, the Nexus 10 always kind of had performance issues and, and some things like... You know, it was running that, like, Exynos 5, I think, that you know, it was the only time anyone ever used that processor, I think. It was a dual core, which is fine, so is the, the one in the Nexus 9. Um, I would say it's a worthy upgrade. Like, the display in the Nexus 10 is still awesome, but the, I always thought the performance pretty much sucked. This thing shouldn't have any performance issues whatsoever. With Lollipop, with that 64-bit processor, it should be a beast. And, you know, Tim will, Tim will test that and find that out. But, yeah, it should be awesome. Oh, sure. Yeah. What about a pocket test? Everyone wants a pocket test. A pocket test? Pocket you test. Just to see if it'll fit in my pocket? Yeah, in your pocket. Sliding in pocket. I mean, the pants I'm wearing now, it fits in. They're oh, jeans. Because... Because they're Jinko, right? <laughs> yeah, in my Jinkos right now. <laughs> I mean, it fits in there. It's definitely, fam, it's definitely covering pants. up like two thirds of my thigh. But uh, I don't know. See, it's not the type of phone you can go running with. You know, uh, it's just, no. it's too darn big. Yeah, no, it. You definitely could not run with this thing. I don't even know if they make like those armband things or anything that would even come close to fitting this bad boy. Oh well, yeah, then you can't show off your biceps. And you certainly wouldn't want to like hold this while you're running. I mean, it's like 200 you know, grams running. practically. <laughs> yeah. All right, what else do we got here? Doesn't I think I think I already answered this. Does the Nexus Six have double tap to wake? It doesn't. I believe that's just a Nexus Nine thing. So like I'm tapping and nothing's happening. And I just looked in the display settings, and the only option is for. Uh, ambient display, which is when you pick it up. So 
I know you probably can't see this, but ambient display, which is pick up the uh, device, and ha and when notifications arrive and it lights up, there's nothing for um, tap to wake. I can look in the Nexus 9 to see if it actually has a setting for that or not. Uh, no, it doesn't even have a setting for that. So it just must always be on. That's kind of interesting. You should be able to turn that off, you would think. Uh, so yeah, uh, no, as far as I know, there is no double tap on the Nexus 6, just a Nexus 9 thing for whatever weird reason. Excellent. Yeah. Anything else in there? The, <laughs> the back of the turbo looks like it's a dirt magnet. It's kind of dirty. I mean, it's it hasn't been really bad. It definitely, some things cling to this nylon. I don't know what the other the other versions would be like. Let's see. Does the Nexus 6 have magnets for wireless charging? Does it stick to the charger? Oh, I don't have a Nexus charger next to me. I just have the plastic Samsung one. So sorry, I can't test that for you. Let's um, did you talk about it being upside down, the charger, the micro USB? <laughs> yeah. I think I kind of mentioned that. So okay. I'll just, I, don't, I don't know if this can get on camera or not. But So here's a Moto X, and here's the Nexus 6. Oh, my God, it's upside down. And you can see, yeah, I know it's not focusing on me, but you can see that, yeah, Google basically told Motorola to flip over the USB port, so it's upside down. So, yeah, the Moto X and Droid Turbo both have the USB the correct way, at least in our opinion, and yeah, Google basically said, no, we want that flipped over in the uh, in the Nexus 6, which is just silly. Uh, let's see, I thought I saw one other question. Oh, somebody said, is the uh, camera protruding like on the Nexus 5? Well, it's not on the, it's definitely not on the Nexus 6. That's flush. It's actually slightly dented. Well, no, it's definitely, there's like a little slight bump, but not that you would notice. And, and the, uh, the actual lens is definitely... Um, not sticking out. On the Nexus 9, it is. So it is a little bit, at least, I know this is hard to see, but it is on the top, sort of outside corner. It definitely sticks out, and then it kind of comes flush when you get to the middle of the device. So on the Nexus 9, it does stick out. Not on the Nexus 6. And, yeah, what else? Uh, are we going to do an, uh, an unboxing of the Nexus Player? I know that's kind of hard to unbox because that's really more about using it on your TV. So we'll probably do more of like a walkthrough of Android TV. Oh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I am I too, actually. Yeah, I mean, just you know, having the ability to access Google Play from the TV is great. Um, I was funny. I I gave uh, my really close friend the old Logitech. Google TV, oh, yeah. and he just hooked it up uh, like yesterday, and you know you got the keyboard and stuff. And we're trying to navigate through it's Honeycomb so or whatever the hell it's running yeah. these days. Yeah, and it was janky. It was, it was bad. It was crazy to see it booted back up. I was like, look at this. And, was, uh, yeah, what a terrible platform that was. I still have the Sony Blu-ray version mm. hooked up because it was just it just became like my Blu-ray player. Uh, but we used to use it to play, like, I think movies through a couple of different things. I think I even tried to rent a movie one time, and it's just so terrible. Yeah, and, yeah it I came with a little keyboard, too. It was just bad news. I rented... What did I rent? Oh, it was some good movie. It was Drive. I rented Drive through uh, the Logitech box once, and it was a, it was a struggle. Because, I <laughs> yeah. mean, the keyboard... Like, you, you want to be able to kind of scroll with the, the trackpad they have on the keyboard... And it doesn't work right. Oh man, it was very frustrating. Very but, frustrating. So, Android TV, Nexus Player, it just sounds legit. It sounds like everything that Nexus Q should have been, essentially, not just a media streamer, yeah. but a you know a set top box. So yeah, it's almost like they they released the Nexus Q, and because they made really cool hardware, and they had no idea where they wanted to go yet, so they killed it. And now they've made a couple of different products like the Chromecast and now this that are basically like what that should have been, but it just wasn't capable at the time or something. So yeah, this comes with a sweet little remote. Except this doesn't cost like $400 right. and have a sweet LED light around the side. Right. It basically just looks like a flatter, wider hockey puck. The Nexus Q is still the hottest hardware Google has ever released. I keep it right on my desk just to, as like a reminder awesome. of what Google 
uh, you know, has the potential to do. I just wish they would have released like one more update to the queue just to allow it to work because they right. killed off. They like kill even it. if you own one, like you can't even use it. I wish they would have just done like one more like really cheesy update that just would have at least allowed it to work. Because I used to just use it every once in a while for streaming music, and then they killed that like in a Google Music update. It just jerks. sucks. Yeah, super jerks. Uh, let's see. Here's, here's an interesting question. Do you agree with Google in that more if more people tried a phablet-sized phone, they would like it and choose to stick with it? So there was a, an interview. Um, it's like, I, I always forget his name, but he's like the one of the VPs of engineering, I believe, on the Android team. And uh, he, he said that, yes, we went with a big phone in the Nexus 6, and he thought that if, if you gave everyone a Nexus 6, about 50% of the people would choose to keep it. What do you think about that? I think absolutely. Um, I had the same thing happen to me when I was, you know, I went to the Galaxy Note 2 for the first time. You know, it was kind of like the first time I had really experienced such a large phone, and you just, you just kind of get used to it. And then you're like, oh, wow, you know, media consumption is really great on a larger display. So that was number one for me because I love playing games. I love watching YouTube videos, etc. So having a large display is nice, but, at, you know, at some point it gets a little beyond just being a big display and everything's big. You know, the body itself is large and hard to handle with one hand. And, you know, so like my my one issue with a large phone is when I'm laying in bed and I wake up and I, I'm checking my emails and stuff, I'm kind of laying on my side or I have the phone up, facing down. When it's larger, it's just kind of a, it's a real pain to handle. So I'm starting to like those smaller phones again just for that reason. So. Yeah, I, I, I would I kind of agree that I, half people probably would. Like some people... Half people probably say, I want to consume media and I want to like look at everything bigger. Mm. Um, and then there's people like you and I that say, no, we want to use our phone in one hand. But I, it probably is. I mean, millions and millions of people have bought the Note phones. And everyone copied Samsung because they were selling so many of them. I wouldn't doubt it if if you had it, like a room of 50 pe- or 100 people, if 50 of them said, no, I want this big guy instead of that little guy. Especially if they're right next to each other. I mean, and it's also sort of an American thing, right? We always we all want more for our money, so we buy the whole bigger is better thing and whatever. Yeah, I think we saw that, you know, that kind of whole scenario played out with the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. And considering how well the iPhone 6 Plus has sold, mm-hmm. and, all, and all of these people that were once on iPhone came from a 4-inch device, jumping to a 5.7. Sure, there was a few who said, this is way too big, but some people just absolutely fell in love. And if we're, you know, it, they used to call the thing our our phablets, our larger phones, you know, trash because like mm-hmm. they're just so big. Blah blah. blah. Once Apple does it, yeah. you know, it's a godsend. <laughs> so it's just really interesting, you know, people's preference and what they think they want until they actually try it for themselves and right. form their own opinion without being told what to think. Um, but, I wonder you know, how many people. Hard. I wonder how many people were shocked, like, once they bought, like, if they went from, like, a small iPhone 5 and then went straight up to the Plus, like, I wonder how many people went, oh, my God, this thing is massive, and just freaked out and took it back. I don't know that we'll ever see numbers on that stuff, but I wonder how many people actually did that, though, because that's yeah, I mean, a huge I, jump. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, I saw a few stories on Twitter of people who were able to kind of pre-order it that night, and then got and they were like, oh, and so then they had to go on Craigslist because if they wanted to return it, they would have to stand in line of the people waiting at the Apple store to buy one. Yeah. So he's like, he so he just sold it and then bought a regular iPhone six, That's and cool. uh, it is pretty crazy. But I think the six is such a more like realistic size, you know, it six is. plus and the four or the five, excuse me, and five S were like just too small, and then one's too big. Like the six feels pretty good in hand. I hate to say, but it does. <laughs> Yeah, size-wise, it's not a bad size, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just the iOS thing that kills it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, somebody asked, what's the material of the back like? Is it like the Nexus 5? Um, so the Nexus 5 has a couple different textures. Like the black one is definitely more of a stickier matte, and then the white one is more of kind of a, a polished, smoother material. I would say the, the back is a lot like the white Nexus 5, not the black, if that makes sense. The back of the Nexus 6 is also kind of like, um, if you buy a Moto X and you get the, uh, the sort of plastic resin version, it's kind of like that. You can see it's also kind of a fingerprint magnet. Look at that. <laughs> kind of getting grubby. Um, but like the Nexus 9, 
this is that material you find on the black Nexus 5, which is kind of a stickier matte. This is definitely smoother, more like the white version and the red version as well. If that helps. Oh. Yeah, I mean, does it feel kind of like a polycarbonate, kind of like the old 1X yeah. from HTC, kind of yep, like exactly. that? Yeah, exactly. Yep, so it feels like the old HTC 1X, okay. which is awesome. And it's not slippery. At least my hands are maybe moist right now or something. But it's not slippery, like, which is good for a phone this big. You definitely do not want it to be slippery. Uh, yeah, it feels all right. It's just huge. That's exciting. Yeah, Pretty exciting times. Uh, let's see, maybe one more, and then we can uh, call it quits. Uh, well, someone asked, is there bloatware on the Verizon version? So there isn't, like, a Verizon version and a T-Mobile version, and there's one model of the Nexus 6 for the U.S., and then there's one model that's the international model. So the carriers will all sell the U.S. version, um, but they can potentially load it with some bloatware through a new Google Play setup that I believe is a part of Lollipop. So there could be bloatware if you buy it from a carrier, but I believe you'll be able to uninstall almost all of it. So it's different, but there isn't like carrier versions. None of them are going to say like Verizon or AT&T. You're basically just buying the unlocked one on their, on, on their network. As far as I know, because um, Google hasn't announced any other versions, and we haven't seen any go through like the FCC or anything. So, so yeah. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, somebody said uh, my problem is I refuse to own a phone that requires a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> fanny packs are coming back. I don't know if anyone's yeah, noticed. Fanny but... packs coming back. They they might be. It's probably yeah. about time for the fanny pack to come back. Well, it, it just makes sense. I mean, it's a good place for you to store all your valuables and whatnot. <laughs> or at least some type of satchel. I yeah, mean, I mean, there's fun. always been, like, the practical idea, but it's the uh, style of it. It's a fanny pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else, then, before we kind of wrap? Oh, Moto 360. And somebody just mentioned this in the chat, the cognac leather. So Moto 360 <laughs> kind of showed up on Amazon in some new colors accidentally. Uh, one's a champagne gold, and there's a basically a men's version and a women's version. There's like a thick band version, a small band version, and then the cognac leather, which looks so good. I just want them to release the cognac leather watch band already. I got to get that gold. And you want the gold. <laughs> I got to go. Uh, That'll be like the Vegas 360, man. That thing looks so baller. <laughs> I can't even explain. <laughs> like Trinidad James is going mad crazy for the champagne gold Moto 360. <laughs> it does look nice. I, I would agree. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I don't even really like gold, but it just kind of kind of looks classy. I mean, I'll probably wait to see it in person a little bit before I go driving $300 on a 360, but... It looks cool. I don't even like gold, but I want that thing. That's right. It just looks it just looks baller, man. It does look pretty good. I, I mean, a, I'm fine with my silver piece. one, but well, I'll let you go ahead and pick up the, the, <laughs> champ, the champagne. The champagne. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're calling it champagne metal. Yeah. To celebrate the Giants uh, World Series to for the gold, you know, the champagne and stuff. <laughs> Popping bottles. Popping bottles. It does look pretty good, though. It doesn't look terrible. You know, it doesn't look too tacky, which is right. a lot of my problem with a lot of gold watches. Right. Uh, it's kind of a tacky, but it doesn't look that bad. No. You know, who knows when the face, you know, because it's all, that's a render, clearly. So, right. yeah. who, who knows? But, of yeah, course, the cognac is what we've been waiting for for months. Yeah, so. that leather. Uh, and the uh, champagne one, they didn't have at the Motorola event. They just had the silver, which they're calling natural, and the dark, which is the sort of black metal. So we've seen those, but, yeah, we had... We kind of had an idea that maybe this gold one was coming, but they didn't have it on hand there. So, Well, why not, like, a diamond-encrusted one now? I mean, why not just go, you know, all really out do it. Yeah, and, just really you know, make, do like, it. a, a $2,000 Moto 360 with a one-day battery life? That would be <laughs> sick. Yeah, think about that. Like, I, we're already paying 250 well, $300 for those all-metal ones, and they last a day. If you spent, yeah, can you imagine if you spent, like, 2500 bucks on one for some gold or some fake diamonds and the thing Apple's going to do it. You know Apple's going to do it. They're partnering with all these, you know, That's you know, true. top designers and stuff. And what and what what does it start at? Like 350? 
It's, yeah, I think so. And that's for the small band, like, for, like that's, the sport version, I think. That no, yeah. Yeah, I mean the, those top ones with the twenty-four karat gold or whatever, you know, are just going to be insanely priced. And then sure, why not? There, there will be custom ones out there with diamonds that Kim Kardashian will rock. I, I guarantee it. <laughs> where it are uh, where are they going to sell those? So you know, like the ultra premium ones. Where are they going to sell those at? In Apple stores? They're going to sell like a gold iWatch, Apple Watch, whatever it's called, in a store. Maybe only like at certain flagship stores, or you're gonna have to get them straight offline or online. Excuse me. Would you buy a three thousand dollar gold Apple Watch online without seeing it? I'm just like I'm just wondering, like how are they gonna do that? Well, what do what else do rich people do? I mean, like what else? <laughs> why not? I mean, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you have that much to blow on an Apple Watch, I don't think you really care if you see it in person or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're probably yeah. right. Crazy. All right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, so recap, Droid Turbo, we like it. Solid phone. Still looks like a droid, which is probably why I wouldn't choose it. Battery life's been so-so. Camera seems legit. Performance is awesome. We'll have a review soon on that. Tim will have our Note 4 review done soon as well. The Nexus 9 is essentially available on Monday. We'll try to have a review as close to that as possible, but you know, we just got it today. That's not a lot of time. Next is 6, T-Mobile says November 12th, so look for more closer to that. There's a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, Lollipop's going to be coming out. We'll have to let you guys know. So That's pretty much it. Can you hear the guy leaf blowing? Is that coming through the microphone? Nope, not at all. I was trying hey. to get Loki over here because I was like, oh, wolf hybrid? Where am I? But he's... I think I have a leaf blower out there too because he's only paying attention to the logo. <laughs> I swear every time we do a daytime show, the leaf blower comes out. Well, the sun is out. I don't know if everyone else knows, but it's been raining here for the past two days, so now the sun is out a little bit, and it's Perfect. Halloween, so Perfect everyone's time. trying to clean up stuff. And oh, yeah. I should probably do that, too. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Well, nothing else. Thanks for joining us on uh, this Friday afternoon on Halloween. I know you guys are busy doing things, so uh, yeah, we've got all the Nexus stuff in-house. We'll be covering more of it, letting you guys know everything we can. Uh, look for Joy Turbo, Note 4 Reviews, that stuff. It's going to be fun. We've we got a lot to do. And this is the stuff we like doing, so uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, there so yeah, thanks again, for... Oh, there it is. <laughs> wolf, wolf Pup? Wolf Pup. <laughs> cool. Right, cool. Yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Yeah. Everyone be safe. It's Halloween. Be safe out there. And uh, have fun. We will, uh, we'll be back next week, probably. Peace. Peace.